help you, mister? I'd like to see Mrs. Lemaire. Is she in? Who'd like to see her? Tell her Janet Lemaire. Who'd you say? Janet Lemaire. I used to live here. You stay right where you are. Kelly? You've grown into a beautiful woman, Kelly. Have the years been good? Yes, most of them. You look more content than you did when you were here. I am. I have work and friends. You didn't have many of those here. That's what I remember. It's peculiar. Many of our children feel a common bond in being abandoned. You never did. I guess I always thought my parents would come for me. I used to think about that every night before I went to sleep. And then you cried. And you'd come in and comfort me. As much as I could. Sister Anne, is there anyone I might have forgotten? A friend or maybe someone who wasn't a friend? There's only one person I remember you were close to. A girl named Barbara. Her bed was next to yours. I remember the two of you singing at Vespers. Yes, I remember. Do you know where I can get in touch with her? She became a servant of God, a member of this order for a while. Then she went to Africa. There was a raid on the village. She was killed. It's difficult to pick up the threads of one's past. I take it this is something of importance to you. Yes. Sorry I can't be more help. That's all right. Good seeing you again. And you, child. God go with you. Thank you. And may he watch over and protect you. Sorry I don't have time for the full massage. Maybe next time. You ever think about... Getting married? Once in a while. Not very often. How come? I don't know. It takes a lot of trust. And I have trouble with that. Not as much as you used to. Thanks to you. Why? Because that license is registered to a man named John Barton, a cadet at the police academy. The police academy? Well, that's crazy. Charlie, are you sure? The point is, are you sure? Did you get the right license number? I don't know. I was pretty badly shaken, and it happened very quickly. You know, if we make a move, and it happens to be the wrong move, we can tip our hand and blow it. Exactly, Kelly. We can't afford to make any mistakes. We've got to be sure. I think one of us had better, uh, how do you say it in the service, uh, re-up at the academy. Will you call the academy? Set up my cover for me, Charlie, and make sure I get in Barton's class. Consider it done. And good luck, Kelly. Could you give a girl some change? Sure thing. Sure. <clears throat> what would you like? I usually buy my own. Well, now I'm buying. That's the change. Clever fella. Well, I wouldn't hassle you. You're too handy with that pistol. Where'd you learn to shoot like that? My daddy's farm used to be overrun with rabbits. Well, I'll bet there aren't many left. You're right. You got a name? Kelly Garrett. John Barton. Ted Miller. Hi. Hi. Well, how'd you get into this class halfway through? Um, I dropped out a few years ago. Figured something better would come along. It didn't work out. Too bad. Oh, something will come along. Then I'll wrap it out of here. <laughs> Real dedicated type, huh? You can't eat steak and champagne on a cop's salary. And I'll bet you just love steak and champagne. That's the second bet you'd have won. Well, I know a place that serves a filet about that thick. I know a better place. Devereaux's. Lunch is divine. But cheap it ain't. 
I can handle it. And eat peanut butter sandwiches until payday. Well, there are paydays, and then there are, uh, paydays. Ah, he's really Mr. Gotbucks, right? Just plays policeman for the fun of it? We do okay. Mmm, we it is. Have I stumbled on the gold dust twins? Well, let's just say we're about as dedicated to being cops as you are. Here's to dedication. Mrs. Lemaire? Yes? I have to speak to you. It's urgent. It's late. You'll have to come back tomorrow. It will only take a second. I understand there's a young woman in this house who claims to be Janet Lemaire. Claims to be? Yes. A gasoline attendant in town told me that she refueled her motorcycle this morning and asked for directions to Samara Vineyard. Show the man in. How you doing? I'm Bo Creel. I run the place for Mrs. Lemire. Scott Woodville. I'm an attorney. About this girl, uh, you saying she's an imposter? <laughs> First order. She's... Well, I'm sorry. I'm not at liberty to discuss the details of the case. Uh, where is she? Oh, she's not here. Not here? I don't understand. No, she says, she, she says she's going into town. Any idea where? No. Just to visit a childhood friend. She said she wouldn't be back till late. Hmm. Well, I suggest that when she does get back, we have the sheriff waiting for her. Oh, no need for you to stay, Mr. Woodville. We'll, uh, we'll call Sheriff Hopkins ourselves. Oh. Very well. I'm glad we'll be taken care of tonight. It could be very embarrassing if those two women were to meet. Two women? Well, yes, the imposter and the real Janet Lemaire. Oh, didn't I mention it? There's good news. Mr. Lemaire will be flying in tomorrow morning at 10. Looks like we just wasted a glass of warm milk. What are we going to tell the sheriff? She didn't come back. She lost her nerve. Tell Wilder to bring in the tarp and the rope. What about the real Janet Lemaire? We'll take care of her when the time comes. Well, I'll say this. You got some nerve coming back here. Do you really think I'd fall for that warm milk bit? Lawyer named Woodville uh, just dropped by. Said that the real Janet Lemaire would be coming by here tomorrow. She got away? <laughs> oh, nice try. You know, I'll say this for you. You sure came prepared. But all I got to do is call the sheriff, and he's going to put you away for a nice long stretch. Fine. That'll give me plenty of time to tell him about the kind of milkshakes you serve around here. Why did you come back? Okay, she got away. No one knows what I look like. It'll still work. What are you after? Half of whatever there is. Half the vineyards. Grapes? Who's talking about grapes? What else is there? That's what I'm here to find out. Find out about what? I don't have to be a mind reader to know what you two are thinking. You get me to tell you what I know, and then you dump me someplace. Well, I'd advise you not to do that. Anything happens to me, I've got friends out there. Keep talking. 
When we kidnapped Janet Lemire, that's all it was going to be. I'd sell off everything, and then we'd divvy up the proceeds. We gave her a shot, a truth drug. I asked her the questions, and she filled me in on everything from the time she was a kid. Then suddenly, she started mumbling about some guys who made her a business proposition. What guys? I asked her that. She didn't know. What she did say is that the vineyards were worth a fortune. She said they mentioned a figure. What figure? 20 million. Here? Now, what could be on this place worth 20 million bucks? That's what we're going to find out. How? First off, no milkshakes. We keep an eye on her. She's bright, but she doesn't know we know. She'll make a slip. Just one little slip, and that's all we need. Then we'll make our move. Do we have a deal? Thank you.